This is Brent with Likens Motorsports. Our video this week is uh, we're beginning a build, actually beginning several new builds, but uh, I'm gonna feature this one uh, today. This is going to be a 465 cubic inch tunnel port. Uh, as you know, I do primarily FEs and the tunnel port is one of my favorites. Probably is my favorite. Um, just a, a really nice um, performing cylinder head when the right modifications are done to it and very unique in its own way. And there's not many floating around. The, the tunnel port was not available, um, you know, in a vehicle. And, but the heads and the intakes uh, and that, that sort of thing were, were available over the counter from, from your Ford dealer. So just a very interesting piece of Ford history. This is a factory uh, original 427 side oiler block. And you can tell that it's a side oiler um, by these humps going down the side of the block. These are the feeds that go to each main bearing. And it's fed by this passage here. So if you see a block, uh, you know, in a junkyard or a friend's house or whatever, you know, there's, there's several things that denote a 427 side oiler uh, that, you know, it's got the cross bolted main caps, but that in and of itself does not make it a 427. And if you're out in the junkyard or at a friend's house and you see, you know, bolt heads right here, uh, don't automatically think it's a 427. I've seen guys glue bolt heads to the side of their 390 blocks uh, just so they could fool people that, that don't know any better. But um, this one is a true side oiler. And um, if you, you know, this block, or I'm sorry, this passage here that sets to the driver's side of the timing cover, if you don't see that on, on the block, uh, that you're looking at, it's not a side oiler. Uh, that's, that's very important to have this passage. It goes down the entire length of the block and then comes out the back end of it. Uh, the difference between a 427 center oiler and a 427 side oiler is, is basically just that. It oils through uh, the side on the side oiler. The center oiler behaves just like a a 390 or a 428 block in that the oil is picked up from the pump and it goes up this diagonal passage here, which here's the clean out for it on this end, but basically a center oiler feeds the mains through um, off of this main chute here in the, in the lifter valley. Um, that is not considered a priority main oiling system when they do it like that. Um, in the 60s, um, they were fighting lots and lots of, of failures due to just a lack of technology back then. Um, the oil pan technology really wasn't up to snuff. The oil technology really wasn't up to snuff. Uh, connecting rod strength wasn't there. And lots of guys were, you know, uh, spinning rod bearings and such, and it wasn't really the block's fault. Um, it was just the technology, the time for the other parts. Because now we're spinning center oilers, you know, my 352 will go 7,500 RPM and, you know, not have any issue. And, and I've done that with 390s and others too. So, you know, a lot has changed in the past 50 or 60 years. But, um, the, the differences between the, the side oiler and the center oiler, uh, just exactly what, what I just described, uh, plus the cross-bolted main caps, that is, that is a feature of the side oiler, and that does add a lot of strength to the bottom end when you're really trying to add some horsepower. So all the machine work has been done to this one. It's a 4.25 bore. Um, Standard bore on a 427 is 4.233. 
So we took this one out, 17,000. So it just needed a little bit to be cleaned up. Uh, this block uh, needed a lot of, somebody had decked it quite a bit before and we had to take another 5,000 off of it to get it straight. And the deck's parallel to the crankshaft center line, which is very important. And um, it's currently sitting at a 10.135 deck height, which uh, if you're familiar with FEs, that's quite a bit under factory deck height for an FE. So we'll have to do some other tricks later on down the road to make sure that we don't um, cause ourselves problems with push rod clearance inside the tunnel port intake. If you, if you uh, obviously I'll you know outline all of this as we go forward in the build, but if you have time to Google a tunnel port intake, the push rod tubes go right down through the center of the port on on a tunnel port. So they have little uh, brass, I think brass or aluminum um, tubes that are uh, affixed to the inside of the port. And um, if you don't have clearance there for your push rod, then things can get hairy real quick. So um, generally when I do tunnel ports, I don't try to take off you know much material from the deck surface or the cylinder head surface just so that I don't cause myself problems later on down the road. So um, in future videos, we'll probably be talking a bit more about that. So, um, yeah, finished machine work has been done. This one's been a line honed as well with ARP main studs. Um, I just got through um, tapping down inside of uh, this offshoot. This is what feeds your, your lifters. Oil comes down through this main gallery and you can see how it kind of angles down this way and angles down this way. So this is what feeds your lifter bores. This is going to be a solid roller camshaft. Uh, we're gonna use some really good lifters. Um, I don't really use, well, I don't use cheap parts in my build. So we're gonna use some uh, Morel or Crower solid roller lifters in this one. And this is a quarter inch pipe thread hole. It's a big hole. You, usually when you tap for a quarter inch pipe thread, you drill a 7 16 hole. So you can see how big this hole is. I can almost get my finger in it. You don't need that much oil for, um, for a solid roller lifter or a solid flat tappet lifter. So what I've done is I've tapped down inside this hole. Let me get my pin light uh, so I can show you what's going on. So down inside, oh, this may be horrible. You can kind of see down inside the hole, uh, it narrows down, it necks down, and it just so happens to be the perfect size to tap um, an eighth inch pipe thread. And uh, this fits right down in there and I can get my tap started. And then what we do is take an eighth inch pipe plug and drill an orifice in it. Um, somewhere between 80 and 100 thousandths is fine. So you can see, you know, how much we have necked down that volume of oil. And that's all you need to feed your, your solid roller lifters and, and all your uh, oil through the push rods. So we'll feed through the push rods and that's all you need to, to oil your rocker arms as well. And what that does is that keeps more oil in the bottom end. Uh, one of my biggest gripes is that in the 60s, everything was made bigger. And, you know, when you see the ports on these tunnel port heads, you'll think, oh my goodness, you know, um, I can almost get my fist down in a tunnel port intake port. And what we do when we port those, we don't actually make them bigger. We actually fill the floors with about a quarter inch of epoxy and we make the port much, much smaller. And, you know, they flow about 40 CFM more uh, than the factory did with, um, with just a factory port. You know, these heads will go 370, 380 CFM with some modifications like that. But, you know, in the 60s, everything was, was made bigger. And um, the, the port size on the heads, uh, the oiling, you know, they, they thought more is better 
And, um, you know, the gist of FE oiling is don't make it bigger. Um, you know, don't take a drill and drill out all your passages and, and do this or do that. But just, you know, be logical and methodical about how much oil you lose um, downstream to different, you know, hole sizes. So, um, I'm going to roll this over. This, I mean, this is a really nice block, and it's been um, still abraded, baked and tumbled. All the machine work's been done. I'm going to do a final wash here in a minute and um, get this thing painted up so you can see it. Cam bearings are already in it. So the difference between the cam bearings on a center oiler, uh, either a center oiler 427 or a 390, 428, 352, on, on a center oiler, all the cam bearings look like this. They just have one hole. And you line up the hole. Um, different guys have different methods of doing this, but basically you clock the hole wherever you want it to, um, to feed. Um, in a center oiler, there is an annular groove behind the cam bearing, and that feeds your main bearings and your cam both. On a side oiler, you use a different bearing altogether. Um, it's an F33 for a 390 or a 428 or a 427 center oiler. It's a F24 Durabond part number for a 427, and several of the bearings have two holes in them. Some of them have three holes. Um, and the reason for that is on your second and your fourth cam bearing, um, there, there is an offshoot that puts the oil up to the heads. So you just have to watch out and make sure you get those clocked the way that they are. On some um, rocker arm systems, like when I use a TND race rocker, I will um, clock these so that this passage is blocked all together because you just don't need it. On this one, I've got them lined up, but I'll still probably block it at the head and oil through the push rods anyway. So a couple of things that you need to watch out um, for when you knock your cam bearings in. Um, I'm not gonna do a video of, of me doing that, but uh, the first thing is you want to leave yourself a little bit of a lip here for this cam for this front cam bearing. And I should have showed it before I roll it over. Let me see if I can roll it back over one-handed. It's a lot tougher than what I thought it would be. And then the other thing is you want this feed facing out. This feeds your cam thrust plate. And you want to make sure that that hole is lined up with the hole in the block because that is what feeds your distributor gear shaft. It comes out right here in this, down in the middle of that orifice there, that hole. So, going to get this thing washed again and painted and um, I'll post a video of it all, all prettied up, and it's gonna clean up really well. Oh, one, one thing. Um, I've already got the rear cam bearing in and the rear cam plug in. I'll post some pictures of, of what you should do there. Um, and actually, when, when I edit, I'll put it right here. Um, you drive the rear cam bearing in um, just far enough so that you don't uh, past the shoulder, there's a shoulder that's cast into the block for the rear cam plug to set up against. So if you drive your cam bearing in too far, um, then your cam bearing is going to be the shoulder, and you don't want to do that. So, yeah, here's the picture again, and uh, you don't want to go past this point. You also don't want to. Uh, you also want to make sure that you line up these holes, uh, and you can use a mirror. A dental mirror when when you do that if you need to see it 
And uh, as always, the cam plug on an FE goes in uh, backwards to the way that you would normally think. A cup plug should go in. If you don't put them in the correct way, you will make a lathe out of your cam and you will turn uh, that cam plug down in a heartbeat and feed your, um, feed your bearings full of metal shavings, which is not a fun thing to do. All right, so on this build, we're gonna use uh, some Racetech forged pistons. Um, it's gonna be 465 cubic inches, four 250 bore, uh, four 125 stroke with a SCAT uh, 4340 steel crank. I've got some K1 uh, 6800 rods for it. Solid roller camshaft. Um, with this customer, we're gonna do about 12 to one compression and he has the uh, the two four barrel uh, single plane intake that's also getting port matched to the heads and ported inside the plenums. Um, this is gonna be a pretty stout little motor, so I'm looking forward to, to getting this one done and, and see what it does. All right, so that's it for now. I'm going to uh, get it washed up and cleaned up and detailed, and um, I'll show the final product here in a second all right we are uh, cleaned up and painted and uh, this is what she looks like managed to do it without running the paint I will admit I'm an engine builder not a body man but I did a pretty good job on this one got our uh, ARP main studs already fitted and if you notice there are no studs in the back that's because we use bolts in the rear cap and ARP has a really nice uh, bolt kit for for FEs that includes studs in the front four mains and bolts in the rear main and that's because if you use a stud here the nut and everything sticks up way above the cap and then you have a hard time getting your oil pan to fit without modifying the stud. So um, I just use this kit with the bolts in the back and line hone it with the bolts in the back and the pan fits really easily and, and everything's good and everybody's happy. Uh, one thing I did wanna point out that I forgot to point out in the first video, uh, if you're building a home, please take time to deburr the bottoms of the cylinders. Um, the machining processes, the boring and the honing leaves a sharp edge here. And if you've ever taken an engine apart and the piston skirts were all chewed up, um, that's usually the reason for it. So uh, you can take uh, a stone or a sand roll or, or whatever you choose to use here, but knock that sharp edge off and lay that back so that you won't have any problems there. So um, I was out of eighth inch pipe plugs. You gotta get those ordered uh, and drilled for the correct restrictor in the top. Um, and we'll be ready to check main bearing clearances on this thing pretty soon. May not get to it this week. Got a lot of other things going on, but um, we'll be making some progress soon. All right, guys, if you haven't uh, already, please Hit that big subscribe button down below. Hit the like button and tell all your friends about Lycans Motorsports FE Builder. All right, you guys have a good weekend. Stay safe. Bye.